percent of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. It's moving the whole revolution forward. Got it. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of 24 Hour Script. Let's get right into today's video. When the price of XRP moves, a lot of people are going to miss out on this opportunity, and a lot of people are going to sell early. Today, I tweeted out the upcoming sudden move for XRP is going to be crazy. It will catch everyone by surprise. I want to make one thing very clear it will not be gradual and slow. $2, $3 will be hit within hours once it's ready. Why do I say that? Well, I'm going to get some assistance from Chris Larson here. Listen to what he says here, and I'm going to break down exactly what he means and exactly what we could be seeing in the near future. It determines the value of an XRP, because I mean, right now it's trading uh, just a you know, little between 0 0.005, and it was at 1.6 cents. So what's controlling the, the underlying value of the currency? Is it supply and demand or? It's. Or? Uh, yeah, strictly supply and demand, uh, and you know that demand is just up entirely to uh, market forces to determine what that is. And again, short term, like probably anything else, and particularly in a, in something new like this, uh, very unpredictable, certainly very volatile. And again, this is why we think that most people uh, will not want to think about XRP as the thing that they are going to be buying things in, right? We think most people are going to be using dollar, euro, yen, airline miles, whatever. Um, and in our system, they don't have to think about XRP. We think market makers will think about XRP. And so markets could be driven by them. It can be driven by, uh, you know, you know, any, really any, any, uh, any reason. I think long term, though, it is this notion that um, it, the primary use is to be something that enables market making, which is really a, uh, helping to facilitate medium of exchange. And we think that's probably like any currency or any, any thing of value, uh, probably the most important kind of uh, source of demand. And again, yeah. that's long term as more and more folks come on the protocol. So before we get into the full breakdown, did you hear him at the end when he says, as more and more folks come on to the protocol? Uh, source of demand. And again, yeah. that's long term as more and more folks come on the protocol. And what do you think Ripple was doing for the past 10 years? Since inception, it has been creating a network of trust. It has brought over hundreds of financial institutions and payment providers into its protocol. And they are planning to transition into the new monetary system. And I don't understand how people don't see that. And what drives the price of XRP is going to be demand. It's going to be demand and banks. And it's going to be the big players. Just take a listen to him when he kind of stutters here. It's like he says driven by market makers and, and you know, just like everything else. But it's going to be driven by banks. Is, like, is this him trying to like hold back? Market makers will think about XRP. And so markets could be driven by them. It can be driven by, uh, you know, you know, it, really any any uh, any reason. I think long term, though, it is this notion that um, it, the primary use is to be something that enables market making. And we can't be forgetting that their stablecoin is going to be in, you know, full production, hopefully by the end of this year, late Q4. And in order for them to get that on board, just know this whole lawsuit will be done. They, they're not going to release their U.S. their new stablecoin, RLUSD, and then start, you know, moving billions in volume and then utilizing XRP as well at the same time, providing more utility to XRP with an ongoing litigation. It, it's not going to happen. So the lawsuit is going to be all cleared up this year 100% and we're going to be in the clear. So just, just you got to factor in. Once the stablecoin goes live, XRP's market cap will rise. No, like it will rise because the stablecoin will bring more volume to XRP. And just take a look at this perspective in terms of who is going to be utilizing XRP and who is utilizing Bitcoin right now. I'm going to use that as an example. 
So right now on the left hand side, you have, you know, Bitcoin and you have a bunch of, you know, the foolish people, right? They're just buying Bitcoin because they don't know where to put their monies into. The target audience for XRP wasn't retail. The target audience for Bitcoin and Solana and Ethereum right now is facing retail. And they're, you know, pushing retail. XRP has never pushed for retail. If you really think about it, Ripple, the company, has never pushed on retail whatsoever for XRP. It has always been banks, payment providers. So think about a mature enterprise work building an infrastructure and they have a public asset, right? And they're all getting ready to deploy and go into the new monetary system and create a level playing field. Uh, source of demand. And again, yeah. that's long term as more and more folks come on the protocol. While you have, you know, people chasing other coins because it's just retail facing and, you know, XRP has been going sideways for a very long time. So the moral of this perspective is pretty much you have poor people chasing after Bitcoin and that is where the money is going into, right? Like they're buying Ethereum, they're buying Solana, they're buying Cardano, they're buying all those coins, but the banks are interested in the utility of XRP. So XRP demand comes from market makers, big money, big, like we're talking big money individuals that are going to utilize this asset for its utility to benefit, right, on their balance sheet. So it's a win-win scenario for everybody. So pretty much you have, you know, individuals paycheck to paycheck buying these other assets while there is a whole other narrative being set up by financial institutions with some certain assets that are going to be used within the financial infrastructure. Like we're talking deep pockets are going to be utilizing XRP, deep pockets. And for the past 10 years, they have been getting the rule book out and they have been discussing it. The IMF, the World Bank, BRICS, everybody is on board. And everything that we have been seeing on this channel has, it's, it's all facts. It has all, it is, you know, it's, it's all happened. And to this day, like when and 10, 20, 30 dollars when it happens, like a lot of people are gonna sell early. A lot of people say they're not gonna sell early, but when they see it, they're gonna sell it. And that's okay. We're all gonna be rewarded handsomely for our time and our patience. Just you guys are all grown adults, right? You guys will know when to take profit. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And the whale watcher report. The link is in the description down below. The markets are doing a dump. So it is actually a very good opportunity right now. I am deep, deep into this coin currently. And like I said, I'll, I'll replay a little bit of the portions from yesterday's episode. But this coin, I mean, I present it to you and I'll show it to you again, has huge potential. So the link is in the description down below for the whale watch report. If you bought it yesterday or the day before, it's the same. It's the same coin. The markets took a, like there's some, there's a cabal behind this. And, you know, I don't even like talking about this publicly, but there, there's some big stuff going on behind the scenes. And for the individuals uh, that, you know, got into it, you guys know. And whoever purchase it, purchases the whale watch report, you will get a follow-up email with a private telegram group link. That will bring us to a group where I'm in and the individual is holding this coin. And it will be only just about this coin. That is it. We're only going to be talking about this coin. It is a broadcast channel. So you will, once you purchase it, you will get a follow-up email with the private Telegram group just focused on this one single coin. That is, you know, there's some crazy activity going on behind the scenes. So if you guys are interested, link in the description down below. And we'll be back with another video. Yesterday, I made, two days ago, I made this video about this coin on the Whale Watcher Report. Okay, just take a listen. But there is some activity going on here, which makes me believe that it is going to go to at least, at least to these levels right here, which is the $2.8 million. 
Why do I say that? Because there are some big guys in here. Why do I say that? $2.8 million. And now we have been less than 48 hours. We are at, we just peaked 2.7 million. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't wanna hype anything up. This is, I mean, for the guys that are holding it, that got the Whale Watch report, you guys, I don't know what you guys did with your holdings, um, but this is a coin that I am kind of going to sit on. And I'll tell you why. And if you guys are interested, the link is in the description down below for the Whale Watcher report. It does reveal this coin. But hear me out. At this point, this is very, very risky. I told everybody for the first Whale Watcher report when you guys all, it was right here. Pretty much at, it, it was at $184,000 in market cap. And, and here we have the screenshot to prove it. And now, this thing could, in my opinion, surpass $5.5 million in market cap because you have this individual right here that is holding half a million dollars in Miki, Bimichi, Sushi, whatever you want to call it. He just opened up a position in this coin. And this is not the only Miki whale holder that has opened up a position in this coin. So if you guys think that there is potential here, and right now it is not out there. Uh, I'm checking Twitter, it, 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 it is not out there, but the way these guys are buying it, as you could see here, that's on the screen, what do they know? Because they just invested $25,000 today. We got in before they did. Eventually, be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. <laughs> I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.